Hello there fellow travelers, Aki O'Brien here and welcome to my No Man's Sky Synthesis Overview. I know I'm kinda late to the party but there was seriously so much to cover that it took me a while to make this video. The Synthesis update numbering 2.2 was released on November 28th, 2019. It features a lot of quality of life changes as well as up to 297 bug fixes. Let's get started. First up is a huge quality of life change for starships. You can now upgrade storage space using units and or upgrade the class using nanites. It's quite expensive however so please keep that in mind. It will cost around 60 million units to upgrade your storage space and about 50,000 nanites to upgrade high level ships. This is a huge quality of life change because finding S class ships is based on RNG and I remember taking 8 hours to find my S class explorer. Having more options to upgrade ships is a good thing, trust me on that. You can also scrap unwanted starships and reclaim units as well as technology. In addition to upgrading the ship itself, the space map on the starship has been improved, making it more clear where objects in space are located. Locating planets on the fly is much easier now especially if they are behind other planets. There are also three new technology modules for starships available for unlocking in the anomaly. The emergency warp unit enables you to fast warp to another system when in danger. You cannot choose a system and the unit may take damage and need repairs when used. It costs 240 nanites to unlock and one warp cell, 220 gold and four microprocessors to build. The instability drive increases the fuel efficiency of the pulse engine by 34%. It costs 460 nanites to unlock and 1 warp cell, 3 tritium hyperclusters and 100 chromatic metal to build. The sublight amplifier increases the speed of the pulse engine by 30%. It costs 460 nanites to unlock and 3 carbon crystals, 100 platinum and 200 tritium to build. There are also two new technology modules for the exosuit as well. The airburst engine allows the jetpack to recharge while airborne, slightly increasing the distance you can travel. It costs 460 nanites to unlock and 150 chromatic metal, 150 phosphorus and 150 oxygen to build. The personal refiner enables you to use a portable refiner directly from your exosuit. This is also a fantastic quality of life change because you don't have to carry around a portable refiner and it can also serve as a short term storage slot. It costs 360 nanites to unlock and 150 oxygen and 100 chromatic metal to build. Next up is a huge quality of life change for terrain edits. Who remembers making a base in the cliffside or a hill and having to remove dirt every single time you played because it regenerated? Or having your gaming OCD being triggered because the ground was not perfectly flat under your base? Well I do. <laughs> But now you don't have to deal with those issues anymore. The terrain manipulator now has two new modes, restore and flatten. Flatten will now flatten the ground and let you build your base in peace. Restore will undo changes and bring back the original terrain. Terrain edits will also be saved. Keep in mind there's a cap on how much terrain you can edit, but it seems to be a sizable amount. We now have triangles as building parts. Insert Illuminati <laughs> joke here. They all cost one salvage data to unlock. There are two varieties of the triangle, the regular triangle and then a the small triangle for all three materials, wood, metal and concrete and they are very cheap as well, 10 carbon and 5 carbon respectively and 10 ferrite dust and 5 ferrite dust respectively as well. There are significant changes behind the scenes to quality of life to building as well. Standard parts have been optimized, allowing more objects to be placed within the complexity limit, including on the freighter as well. The accuracy of suggested snap points have been improved and the preview hologram for building parts have been made more clear. We have even more time saving features added in. You can now own and switch between more than one multi-tool. This is a fantastic addition to the game because you can now min-max your loadout depending on your playstyle and switch easily on the fly between your multi-tools using the quick menu. You can also save custom outfits and change between three of them. This is quite handy for making outfits using the shiny Quicksilver community items and being able to switch back and forth. Non-VR modes of the game now have access to first person exocraft 
I think this is a nice touch. There's an incredible amount of detail that makes the game more immersive. VR players are now able to use photo mode and write creatures. Speaking of writing creatures, you can now write any creature using the regular creature bait, and blobs are now writable. Go forth, blob writers. Your squishy and adorable mounts await. For general quality of life improvements, storage containers have been increased from 5 slots to 20, and you can also rename them. Please use this power responsibly. You can drag items on top of other items in your inventory to move them around, as well as simply drop items to repair broken modules. The trade terminal opens instantly to the shop screen instead of going through dialogue first, along with the planetary chart menus. And there you have it folks, believe it or not, there are still changes and bug fixes that I didn't cover because the patch log is super long. And that's why it took me so long to make this video. Anyways, the patch log will be linked in the description below if you want to catch all the details. I tried to cover most of it, at least the things that I feel are relevant to the average No Man's Sky player. Anyways, this is one massive update. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you have any questions, comments, or things you would like to see, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, catch you guys next time.